Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show, and on this episode we are going to review Season 3 of The Umbrella Academy. So, let me just oh say, God. I love this show. This is one of my favorite shows. It's fun. It's this so much fun. Awesome. It was a great season. Um, you know, there was, there were some things about it. It was clear was, as many people are calling it, it was a pandemic season, you know, cause they recorded it during the pandemic. So they had fewer sets and they were, you know, they were inside fewer, a lot, fewer locations, fewer stuff. locations. But other than that, the, we get the, you know, the plot thickens, as they say, that we get a much deeper plot as to what's going on, more backstory. You know, I, I love it when a show makes you think one thing about a character and then you reveal more backstory and you're like, Oh no, this is actually completely different. It makes you completely reevaluate. Exactly. I love, I love the and what's adding dimensions to characters. Yeah, yeah. They do it very well. This season, though, was definitely the weirdest season by far. Sure. It, absolutely. They leaned into like the weirdest part of the Umbrella Academy. Yeah. So get ready for weird stuff because they, they definitely take but you in places. a good way. It's fine. It was good. I enjoyed it very much. Yeah. But, you know, they, they lean into like Bizarro. Yeah. It's a little bizarre. More bizarre than a goldfish in a robot. <laughs> Steve, I don't think science fiction gets any better than that. <laughs> yeah, but that was weird too. Was, I, I don't know that it was. It was that, that was weird, but you you know what I'm talking about. I'm trying yeah. no spoilers, but they do some very odd things. Right, they in do. This season. But if you like the first couple of seasons, though, you're gonna. Yeah, I think you're gonna, gonna enjoy this yeah. season, and it answers a lot of stuff. I mean, at the by the end, you're like, okay. I mean, what what else? Most well, of it the, answers a lot, a lot of the questions, stuff. but it reintroduces new. Yeah, questions there's some new stuff. Well, at the end, which you know teases that there's going to be. A season four, even though it hasn't been officially greenlit yet, yeah. um, it would be shocking if, if there weren't. Although I know I understand Netflix is, you know, they're having some financial yeah. issues. So, well, all streaming companies are, are very much pulling back the amount of money they're spending on, yeah. on new shows. This is um, a terrible. Why? Thing. But I'll tell you why. And I read about this. It's a little sad. It's because the the romance of like late the late great TV that we're getting, like this whole thing about like there's a resurgence of TV. The golden age, age of TV. So we we hit the the peak. And now what's happening is they're seeing like the return on all those investments like start to drip away. So they're pulling it back. Yeah. And plus uh. they're also in combination with that in the United States, because of the the quote unquote uh recession that we're in, a lot of the streaming companies are are future proofing. They're doing what you're supposed to do. When there's a, a financial threat in your future, you you reel in expenses, and they can cancel two shows and save like a half a you know half a billion dollars yeah, by yeah. canceling two shows. Think about that. So mm -hmm. they cancel shows. They're like, oh, we're, we were going to do all these. We're not doing all those. We're just mm -hmm. going to pick our best of the yeah. best. They lost a million subscribers in July. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Netflix. That's so that hurt. that would be unfortunate because you know the the this I think shows like Umbrella Academy are what's best about streaming services and all the you know the choices that we have out there. Um, it's based upon solid uh, source material that, although it's a massive departure from that source material, mm -hmm. I think oh, it, yeah. Yeah, uses yeah. it as, I think, a, a huge creative inspiration, but then goes its own way in the plot, which I think is a, a good thing because TV is not comic books. And, you know, these are different media and you have to tell a story that's appropriate to the media. So what, what I like best about Umbrella Acad uh, Academy is something that, Jay, you, you always say, come back to, is the characters are great. You just enjoy hanging out with these people. Definitely. And Klaus is my favorite. I know, but oh my gosh, Klaus is awesome. Well, Kevin, number awesome. five. Number so five those is two two. Go to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they're all good. They're all, they're all, every character is quirky, you know, unique you know, engaging, charismatic in their own way. How old do you think the actor is that plays number five? I know how old he is right now. You, you do know, you definitely don't yes. say. Bob, yeah. how old do you think the guy Yeah, we saw, we saw some video yeah. before we came down. So I, looked at, I looked him up. I see him now. He's like, damn, he's like a... Yeah, he's 18 now. Yeah, he's 18. He was 15 in season one when they filmed season 15? Two. But, he, yeah, you're right, and I wanted to bring that up. Yeah. Even though he's 18 now and he still is pulling it off. Well, I don't know when they sh they probably shot this a year ago. Yeah, he was, yeah. So he was 16, 17. He was 16, 17, so he's still young enough. Um, my God, can he act. He, I love that he, actor. Keep in mind, he, he is a very, very young actor acting like a person who's lived a very long time mm. in a young person's body, and he pulls it off. Totally yeah. pulls it off. Like, yeah. what, talk about skill. Like This guy is amazing. He, he, yeah, he is the most compelling of the. He's effortless the to watch. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. But so Klaus enjoyable. is a blast. Klaus is, Klaus is just a blast. He's like yeah. being drunk at a Grateful Dead show. Like yeah. that's that's what he's like. He he, he, he is. 
He's amazing. I love him to death. And then there's also Luther. Who I love he's the a goofball. I love, I love the, the act. Right. He's a lovable goofball. But he he was very frustrating for the first two seasons. Like Luther, what what are you doing? He oh can't my get out God. of his own way. But that's you know you have to watch ah, him. But then but, root for him. But in the third season, there was a less of that. He was less frustrating, I think. And uh, he still me, couldn't get out of it. Right. But it made me enjoy him. I think a little bit more. He pulled. A couple of bonehead things, but not as many as the first couple of seasons. Yeah, he's but, evolving. The but, characters yeah. seem to be evolving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, just a lot of great characters, and then there's so many, so many new characters. And like now. every little side Sparrow character group. is is compelling. And then we bring in the Sparrow Academy, yeah. which is very compelling. That blew my mind. Yeah, be, I, don't, I don't know if we should talk about any of that in the non-spoiler part, but they they did a great job with that. That that threw me for a loop, man. So let's click over. We'll say just to, to summarize, we all loved uh, Umbrella Academy in total. We loved season three. If you like the first two seasons, they, the madness continues. Everything is is good. Um, it's definitely we're not in extra innings here. We're in the middle of the meat, you know, of this story that's being told. Definitely watch it. Um, and now let's proceed to the spoiler version of this review. Um, I'm going to start with my favorite scene of the season, which Bob and I just had to rewatch. And that was oh, yours too? the dance off. Oh, the footloose the, dance the, the off. Foot, the footloose dance off. And that's, to me, that epitomized what's awesome about this. It's so show. funny that you guys say that that was your favorite part. Well, just because. <laughs> I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah, but that's what's so, know, so know. awesome about it. I get it. it. I get it. Because what happens is you don't get it. You don't get it until, until you, they reveal the joke. I know. But when it was happening, you know, I watched it. And while it's happening, I'm like, what? Oh is, no, what are they doing? Like, what is happening right now? Like, there's no way that <laughs> this the makes sense. Who create this show lost their actual minds <laughs> to that extent. And then, <laughs> then when they revealed it, I literally was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Because he had no idea. Yeah, but that's that was an experience. But the thing is, yeah, it was right. a great plot device, you know, because you know, one of the sparrows has shoots venom that makes you hallucinate. And we don't know this, right? And she shoots Diego with it, and they, you know, there's just black stuff on his face. And then the you know, the story just keeps unfolding. The sparrow and the umbrella academy's face off. And the way they the way they they fight or duel with each other is with a footloose dance off. Do you think that the, and girl, it's who shoots, shoots awesome. the, the girl who shoots the venom does she have any control over? I don't the, think the, so. You know, I, I don't think so. Because you know, I got uh, the sense when when five was yes. was infected, he gravitated towards something he really wanted. Yes. Right. It was like a perfect scenario. Like right. like the girl that he loved became real. You know, like yeah. and it was a mannequin. So then I was like, did Diego want I everyone to the dance? implication that like, that's a part of Diego wants to be a dancer. So, all right. so anyway. A lot of fun. So yeah, it was, it was a ton of fun. It was a perfect plot excuse to just have an over-the-top scene that was in and of itself completely enjoyable to watch without breaking the story yeah, or the yeah, plot. Right. And you know the actors, yeah. I think loved they it. loved it. It was loved so that. different than anything they, they were done having for the fun, show. So that we were having fun. Yeah. It was great. All right. And Enough then, of that. But, and then they bring it back to reality. And, it, and then again, it flips your perspective. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, that makes perfect. And why didn't I realize that that's what was happening? They did it so well. Yeah. You don't realize what Fun is scene. obvious in retrospect. It was, it was right. brilliant. I, I have more respect for it. now. I didn't think about it again. Yeah. This is the first time I thought yeah. about that. I, I kind of purged that because it still it bothered me so much until I found out. But you're right. Um, all right. So there, there are a few things in this season that I thought were a little runaway. Yeah. Like, so the kid that that Victor saved mm -hmm. that grows up. Yep. And Holland. Yeah. And now it's, uh, you know, I, mean, I'm, I haven't talked to anyone about the show yet. Yeah. I'm, so I'm asking you guys. So she gave him a part of her power. Yeah. But he seems just as powerful as she is. Yeah. And the, as it, he is, I'm sorry, as he is, you're right. Yeah. Oh, they handled that very well. Yeah, they did. They handled it. They pulled that off. They handled his transition wonderfully, I thought, because mm -hmm. first off, this they didn't plan it. That it just it just happened while they kind of were filming. And they ran with they, it. They seamlessly kind of added it in, and I loved how all of the family, Elliot's family, handled it in kind of like a, in a mature way, like you know, trying to make him feel comfortable and happy. I, mm -hmm. It was very well done. It could have could have been a horror show. Actually, but it would have been awkward. It was, it was, it was well a perfect done. way to deal with it because yeah. it, it was an it was instructional. I hope that some people that watched the show saw that and yeah. subliminally picked up the fact that this character's siblings 
actually didn't care. They were yeah. just supportive about it. It right. was definitely speaking about mo- the yeah, modern world, of course. Of course. Yeah. They took the opportunity to write it in. Yeah. And I thought it was a very nice thing to do for, for the actor as well, because the actor got to play the character in the sex that they actually are. Yeah. They right. didn't force him to wear a wig and all that stuff, because you know, clearly that's not what that yeah, person sure wants he, anymore. Yeah, I appreciated that a lot. So it, it was, to me, it was a class act how they handled the yeah. whole thing. Holland now has the same power level as Victor. So I think the, the, what's happening is that when you plant the seed of that power in people, it grows with them. Okay, so it's not and, just like a train. Yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, it makes more sense. It's right. almost like turning a switch on that now they can do it. Yeah, but but you didn't have that power when he was a little boy, though. It kind of grew as he got older. Well, she, got, but she gave it to him. Yes, he 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 gave it. Yes, when she when she resuscitated him, we you know back I, I forget what season it was. You see a part of second the, season so, something come out of her and go into yeah him. the sparkly light. So yeah. which was a thread throughout all three seasons. You know, you know the, the, he has it in the jar, the sparkly lights. He releases it. Apparently, that's the seed that gave birth to all of the super powered. Mm-hmm. You know, children that a mother's being you know, magically became pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see it when it's the life is being sucked out of them at the end. You see it go into one of them. I think it was Ben's mother on the train. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see that, yeah. and so you see it when it goes, you know, into uh, into Holland's mouth, and then you know, I think the idea is that he needed this power to grow in in the people so that they would be powerful enough in order to reset the universe. Which was the whole plan from the, the whole very plan. beginning, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's that explains why he's such an asshole, mm-hmm. right? And and willing to kill himself to kill any of the, the his children, you know, because he knows that none of it matters if he succeeds in resetting the universe. Nothing, nothing. Well, exactly. Get I appreciate his, get every his... sacrifice they do, however much he was an asshole or a dick to everybody, however much they suffered, none of it matters. Because everything gets fixed at the it end. It completely explains yeah. this weird character who this I never understood. This very yeah. weird character. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I thought that you know once you start to understand what's actually going on and like lots of boxes get checked. Yeah. You know I, I appreciated this show a lot more because yeah. it was very mysterious and very odd and they 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 were they were doing that thing that some shows do and I guess like you know it's not that bad. We're in the fourth season now. So, well, this is the third season. Yeah, we, we right. So I'm we sorry. just finished the third. We just season. finished the third season. It's not bad to do big reveals in, in the third season. Like some shows, like let this go on for eight long, nine seasons. For too long. Like what the hell? So it was yeah. good. I felt like pacing reveals is a very important skill in, in in writing. In the first season, we learned that Reginald Hargreaves, right, Reginald, yeah. that he. You see a scene of him with his wife as as she's dying. Clearly, he's on another planet. And the rockets are taking off, so you know he came from another planet. But he looks human there, oddly. In the second season, we see him without his human costume, and we see that he's clearly an alien, mm-hmm. right? Why he wasn't just his natural alien self on his home world, we don't, we don't know that yet. And now in the third season, we realize that, you know, not only was he just escaping his dying world, he was hatching this plot to reset the universe in order to bring back his wife. And it works. Mm-hmm. And you know, we could talk about the very last episode, the end of season three, because there was a lot of plot threads left open. You know, the, you know, again, for every question they answered, they yeah. created a new one. Um, and this, and and it like, is um, always a good you know maneuver. You 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 know, when you end one either movie or season or whatever, you're already beginning to leave. Th- stuff for the fans to obsess about and talk about and speculate about before the next one, right? But I have to say, I don't know if I've said this many times on the show, but like, I like shows that have a real beginning, middle, and an end. Yeah. This is why Lost the end is drove me insane. Four. Lots of people out there love Lost. Yeah. I enjoyed that show a lot, but the fact that they just kept, like the story yeah. just never, they never gave you things that were solid enough. And Let's not talk about Lost. Yeah. But I have to. <laughs> because, you know, no, yeah. In comparison, I want to make sure. I hope this show does have a legitimate ending. They I do. Right. I think. I, I think it's a four season arc. Okay, that's that, that's, that's, that's plenty long. So we have one more season. I think that's what's going to happen. Whereas Lost, they basically had an idea for the first season. It was successful. Like, oh my god, we got to write more stuff. And then they, you know, whatever, they went crazy. But it's still a great show. So yeah, much fun. Okay. Um, it, it was a good ride. Disappointing ending. Very disappointing ending. But anyway. 
that, so we'll see. I mean, there's, I think that they've arced this out in four seasons is what we, what we hear. That's what I want to hear. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about the last episode. So they, you know, again, Hargreaves is willing to sacrifice all of his children in order to have power the machine that right, to bring does them together, something, right, they, bring them together. All his manipulations were to make this happen. It happens. And then we see the result, right? Yep. Um, the one result is that Hargreave is in his tower with his resurrected wife, and he got what he wanted. And also, it's pretty clear that technology is more advanced than it was mm-hmm. in the, in the, in the West. He's, he's on top. And he's on top, right. Yeah. We don't know exactly what the extent of that is, but clearly things are are good for, for Hargreave, for Red yes. and uh, and the world is a very different place. The Umbrella Academy... Um, Except for uh, Sandra, mm-hmm. is that her name, right? Like, the uh, they um, all, you know, are, are back. They're alive, and as any, they were, any damage is no undead, and no powers. They were never that way, right? And no powers, right? So, but so, how does that work? We don't know. It, to me, it's like a, it's another, you know. Um, it's another Kugelblitz, right? Because yeah. because they they shouldn't exist really. So yeah. and actually, what, what what do they call that? A Kugelblitz, right? Yeah, Kugelblitz. Right. Yeah, that's actually a legit theoretical thing in physics where you basically create a black hole not from matter but from just from energy. You you have such powerful radiant energy that you can beam it into one spot and create like a, literally a black well, hole. Why so, would you do that? So. I mean, but then because then you can create a black hole of the size you want that you can then use to power whatever machines you might want to have a black hole power, whatever, take advantage okay. of, of that. This is a universe destroying black hole, though. Right. Just so a regular it's a, black hole. It's just weird a that, paradox black hole. Right. So it's not, so the, but they took that name that sounded kind of yeah. funky and weird and then used it. It's not exactly what it is. And it, it's, a, it's a thing theoretically, anyway. So that was interesting for me just to hear them say that. Oh, Google yeah. Blitz, wow. <laughs> But it was their version of it. But, but so yeah, so they. I think they may be in um in a del- not a delusion, but oh, I, Allison. Her name's Allison. Allison. That's right. Um, but the but everyone except Allison because Allison wasn't in the machine. She wasn't yes. having the life force sucked out of her. She's so in she's, a different place. She may be in a different timeline, reality, whatever alternate. She universe. wasn't reset because she still had her band. Exactly. She and she may still have her powers. She may still have her powers, and she's in an impossible situation because she has. Her daughter right. from her original marriage and her husband it's, from ni- from the 1960s. How did that happen? It can't happen. No. So, so I think they're going to get that. Part. Yeah, I didn't get that. Yeah, I think so. they're going to get all back together and and create and maybe bring their own apocalypse to get rid of Hargreaves and to to save the Earth. Because but is he knows? a bad guy now? We don't know because I, I will, he seemed like a happy guy. I mean, he, I, he got his goal. We don't know. We just don't know. He could be. Tyrannical. We don't know. Yeah, I suspect he, seems, he probably he does, would be. He does seem to be very egotistical. You know, like he was never oh, yeah. a kind person. So who knows? Who knows where they're going yeah. with that? But definitely, never looking forward to season. Never a dull moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, if you have good characters and good interactions, good stories, like you, the, when they when the characters are talking to each other, it's entertaining. It's believable. The dialogue yeah. is real, and. Uh, if that holds your attention, it carries the series. You know the the details of the fantastical aspects of the plot are not critical. You would enjoy it no matter what happens. Yeah. But the plot itself is also very interesting. They pull it off. Like they're clearly arcing it out because they are pulling threads from previous seasons and previous episodes yeah. very well. Exactly. Yeah. I, that, I, that's I, a great like indicator it. that they have yeah. a real story. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Okay. Uh, of all the powers, which power would you want? Mm. Go. I mean, you know, time travel is, is pretty it's hard. It's hard, hard to, it's to hard give to that, that one up. It's very tricky, though. It's very, very, it's not. But, I mean, he said it's like, you know, it's dangerous. It's you know, very you get dangerous. stuck in sure, places. But I mean, I would focus on just going. I like when he went He went back in time in little little snippets. Uh, that would be just that alone would be a very mm. powerful but, ability. And what we find out, like Klaus is freaking immortal. Yeah, Klaus is immortal. That, he would, he might good. be my second choice, although seeing spirits all day would kind of get yeah. kind of boring fast. And I wouldn't kind necessarily want to see. Well, that's why he's a drug addict. addict. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that could be the biggest downfall of that power. Although, yeah. The I like the fact that they explore the downsides of the power as well. They All the, all the powers do kind of have a downside. Like for Allison – she, that's another good that's one. That's a really powerful power, but she is in a situation where she can't really know 
how people feel about her or whatever, because she was unable to resist influencing people. Yeah. And like the, the biggest reveal I thought in season two was when it was yes. revealed. Her husband? That, well, not, you know, no, that, that she. What she did to Luther? What she said to Luther, I heard a rumor that you, that you were in love with me. Oh my God. That was horrible. And that was horrible. Horrible. Yeah, that was and now she can't trust the rest of her relationship with him because it's, you know what I mean? Or, or couldn't resist it with her child. Like I heard a rumor you were sleepy. And that's, that, you know, oh my you God. Have to be, you almost have to be a narcissist to have that power. It's, that's a, <laughs> it is a maniacal power. Yeah, yeah for sure. It, it, and it's, or you have to be a you have to be a Jedi. You have to be such a monk that you will never abuse it. Yeah. It's an amazing power, but it's a massive burden. And again, what we said in the previous review, really there's a thin line between being a superhero and a supervillain. And, and, that, and that Allison yeah, yeah, is must. on that razor's edge. Without a doubt. Absolutely. Well, that, you know, her power is begging her to be on that. Yes. Edge. Yeah. I mean, what she, did you guys think of the cube? <laughs> yeah, it's goofy I don't know. and weird. I don't know, man. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't sell it to me. Well, let me let me let me tell you what why, is it? why it didn't it work. Is. Let me tell you why it didn't work. It's not a real character. Yeah, you don't know anything about it. You don't know what it's saying. You don't know what it wants. And what can it do? What can it really do? It just shot out that, 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 that energy. But the point is, I, I thought it was a very odd decision because it doesn't enhance the story actually in any measurable way. Unless that's a, something they're going to develop in the, in the fourth season, but I agree. I, I thought it was an anomaly. Like, what? I get it. It's kind of a neat thing. Like weird, one of the weird, characters yeah. is a floating cube. It's kind of a one-trick pony. Yeah, but but yeah, it didn't do much. Didn't add much. I, I agree. Yeah, but that was that, that was kind of a swing and a miss. But unless they do something interesting with it in the future, so season three of the Umbrella Academy can't say enough good things about it. It's television at its best, in my opinion. It's speculative fiction at its best you know, really going in interesting directions. And it has a solid anchor of awesome, awesome characters. And, you know, that you just enjoy just spending time with them. Um, so I, I, I want to see more TV like this. If you if you enjoyed the first two seasons, it's very likely yeah. you're going to enjoy the third one. I recommend you watch it. It's, a, it's definitely a lot of fun. But I was... So anyway, guys, we are Alpha Quadrant 6. If you enjoy this show, you can go to Alpha Quadrant 6 that's the number six, dot com. Or if you really enjoy the show, you can become a patron and help us continue making more of these episodes. You can go to patreon.com forward slash alpha quadrant and the number six. Guys, thank you so much. I love hey, talking man. to you about crazy science fiction. We're just geeking out there. I know. It's so much fun. All right. Hey, so we're cooking onions. We'll see you next week. <laughs>